All right, so here we go. We're starting into chapter eight. And topic of chapter eight is momentum, impulse, and we get to deal with collisions as part of that. And so let's just start by defining when we say momentum in this chapter, we're really talking specifically about linear momentum. There's also angular momentum, which is something that's really fun, but we're not gonna get to that this semester. So linear momentum is a vector and it's defined with the letter P, it's a lowercase p, has a, a vector arrow over the top of it. And this triple equal sign just means defined as mass, which is a scalar, times the velocity, which is a vector. That's in your textbook. All right, so that's linear momentum. And I already mentioned that those are vectors. Think about the units of each side. In any equation, the units of the left side and the right side have to be exactly the same. And so we can say, all right, well, the units, we have kilograms. And I'm, I'm always doing SI units when I'm asking these kind, kinds of questions. Velocity has units of meters per second. And so if that's the units of the right side, that has to also be equal to the units of the left side. All right. So now that I've given you a definition for momentum, what are the, um, sorry, which has more momentum, a man running or a bullet? All right, so if your answer was, I don't know, you didn't give us enough information, that's the perfect answer because it, it could be either way, um, depending um, how slowly the man's running, how much mass he has, how fast the bullet's going, or maybe the bullet's not even moving. Um, so anyway, all those things are a factor. So let's look at a more specific example. You have a 60 kilogram person traveling at three meters per second or a 0 0.005 kilogram bullet traveling at 400 meters per second. And so the momentum of the person, let's say, Hmm. Let's just start over. All right, so the momentum is equal to, let me say momentum, just to remind you from last slide, is equal to m times v. So that would be 60 kilograms times three meters per second. And so the momentum of the man is 180 kilogram meters per second. And there's no special name for this. That is not a Newton. Right? It's not kilogram meter per second squared. So it's not definitely not a Newton and it doesn't have any special name. All right. And then we can compare that with the momentum of the bullet. So that is 0 0.005 kilograms times 400 meters per second. And we type that into the calculator. And that comes out to two. All right, so the man has more momentum than the bullet. All right. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. All right, and while we're on this slide, we can ask a, a follow-up question. What if the man stops? Does his momentum change? And does his Inertia change. All right, so when he stops, yes, his momentum changes. His momentum would change to zero. However, his inertia stays the same. 
Now you think of inertia like mass. His mass doesn't change just because he stops. His mass is exactly the same. The man has more inertia than the bullet, regardless of how fast either one of them is moving. But which one has more momentum, that is influenced by how fast each of them is moving. All right, so it's good to differentiate between momentum and inertia. All right, Newton's second law. Now we've already looked at Newton's second law before as F equals MA, but when Newton originally constructed what we now call Newton's second law of motion, it looked much like equation 8.7 here on the screen, which says that the net force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. And so that familiar F equals MA um, was not in his original construction. And in fact, this representation here in equation 8.7 is much um, more broad, maybe not much more broad, but it's more broad. It encompasses um, a greater, it has a greater range of applicability. Because in this, the, the mass of the object can actually be changing, which is really important for things like rockets, for example, because they lose a lot of their mass as they go. All right, units of each side. So we know the units over here are Newtons. And then over on this side, we've got kilogram meters per second for momentum or change in momentum. So that would be P final minus P initial, but those would both be kilogram meters per second in the numerator. In the bottom, we're gonna have seconds. So kilogram meter per second per second. We could simplify by multiplying by one over seconds over one over seconds. And so therefore in the down here, you say that we see that that cancels. Seconds times seconds here does not cancel. So that gives kilogram meter per second squared or Newton. Okay, it's got to match. All right. Um, we could say that this, before I go on, I can show you that change in momentum could be mass times final velocity, if we had a constant mass, V final minus V initial over delta T. And so then we could say that that's equal to M times delta V over delta T. And therefore, you can see, well, delta V over delta T, that should look familiar. That's MA. All right. And so that's, that's for constant mass. All right, so you can see that those two representations of the second law are quite similar, um, or they're, they're consistent with each other is the important thing. So you can get from one to the other. All right, now on the last slide we said net force is equal to delta P over delta T. I'll just show you. So we're gonna multiply both sides of equation 8.7 by delta T. And so we're gonna get delta P on one side by itself, and we're going to get F net times delta T on the other side. So I'm going to change the left and right sides. That's a vector there. All right, so change in momentum is impulse. Impulse is actually a vector, so I'm going to put a vector hat over it. Impulse doesn't have a symbol of its own in our textbook. Some other textbooks do give a symbol for the impulse, but ours does not. All right, so impulse is defined as change in momentum, and it's also defined as F net times delta T. All right, so the impulse on an object is equal to the change in momentum of that object, and it is not synonymous with force. And we're going to go into some examples that are going to help you with that. All right, now we're going to look at an example with Captain America here. So he blocks a 10 gram bullet with his shield and the bullet, let's see, not much to, to, to see. Oops, well, that's not good. There we go. The bullet was traveling toward him at 300 meters per second, bounces 
right back toward the shooter at 200 meters per second. And we know how long the contact time is, and we're supposed to find out how big the impulse of the shield on the bullet is, how big the force of the shield on the bullet is, and then think about if those answers would change if we change the, the impact time. All right, so impulse. equals change in momentum. Okay. Or we could say impulse is equal to F net times delta T. Now we can't use F net delta T. Sorry about that stray line. I still haven't figured out what makes that. So we can't use F net delta T because we don't know what the force is. So we can't use that to find the impulse, but we can use delta P to find the impulse. So this is just a relatively straightforward calculation. So P final minus P initial. We do need to say which way things were going. So based on the picture that we had there before, the bullet was moving toward him this way at 300 meters per second. And then it was going that way at 200 meters per second. Again, sorry about the stray line. And we need to define a positive direction. So we'll say to the right is our positive direction. That means this is a negative value. And we can say that that is VI. And then this is VF here. So the impulse equals, say, 10 gram bullet. Uh, let's see. 10 grams times one kilogram per 1,000 grams. And so that's zero, I guess I'll write it here, 0, 0.010 kilograms times V final, that's 200 meters per second, minus 0, 0.010 kilograms times the initial, which is negative 300. Right, so this negative sign is here based on the direction. This neg or this is not a negative sign exactly, the minus sign, because I'm doing delta p. All right, and then we can just plug in the values into the calculator. And we get a value of five. five kilogram meters per second. All right, now we can find the force. We know uh, delta T and we know delta P now, so we can find that. So delta P equals F net times delta T. So five kilogram meters per second equals F net times 0 0.05 seconds. And so we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.05 seconds. And we see it's 100. And that's kilogram meters per second per second. And we saw that before was a, well, we saw that that was a Newton. All right, 100 Newtons of force. Um, remember that uh, force is a vector, and so this came out to be positive. And so think about whether that makes sense. The force is acting in the positive x direction, which is to the right, and that makes sense. The shield is pushing on the bullet to the right. Okay, that's what we were trying to find. Would the answers be different if the contact time were 0 0.10 seconds? And the answer is no and yes. The impulse would be exactly the same. The impulse does not depend on the time. There's no time in here. Okay, there is time here. But let's look at how that would impact things here. If we put in a time that was twice as large, then we would get a force 
that is half as big. Okay, this would become 50 newtons. Okay, so by changing the time, we get a smaller force, a longer time, but it leads to the same impulse. So the impulse is unchanged. Just about out of my, uh, my usable space down here. Force would be half. Half as big. That's really squishing it in there. All right. So what I would normally do on the first day of our momentum unit is we would all go outside and I would have, actually I stopped using an egg a few years ago. I started using a water balloon instead. I would take a, a flat sheet, like a bed sheet, the, the flat one though, the one that goes on top, and have two people hold it up and somebody else would take a water balloon and throw it as hard as they possibly could at the sheet and it would hit the sheet and fall down and we would catch it at the bottom like have a little a little trough there and the, the water balloon would not break and I'd have as many people try it try it try it hard, throw it as hard as you possibly can and it wouldn't break and then I would have somebody throw it at a brick wall and it would break and so the idea here is to emphasize what we were just talking about about impulse and force so in the one case and these these numbers are not representative the, don't worry about the numbers on these graphs, but the, but the idea is that if we had an, an egg or a water balloon hitting a sheet, you would have a longer time that it takes for the, the water balloon to slow down, which would mean less force is applied. But if you have the, the water balloon hitting a brick wall, it's a short time and a larger force. And so those are just representative graphs of the, the idea, the relative sizes. Now let's get into what the actual numbers would be. Okay, so and we'll we'll talk about the actual force and impulse for each of those. All right, so we'll do it for an egg, um, 0 0.07 kilograms, and it's traveling at 22.3 meters per second. And so here we see the egg is moving across to the left. So the velocity of the egg initial is negative 22.3 meters per second. And think about what the velocity of the egg final is. Whether it hits the sheet or the wall, it's gonna be zero. Okay, and we'll make a positive x direction to the right. In fact, I already did that when I was putting in that number there. So the impulse equals zero, that's the final momentum, minus 0 0.07 kilograms times negative 22.3 meters per second. So the impulse is 1 1.5 six kilogram meters per second. And then if I calculate the impulse for the egg hitting the sheet, well, it's exactly the same. There's, there's no difference. So the, the way that you stop it doesn't affect the impulse at all. Okay, what does change is the force. And so now, what I'll do is I'll add in some information about the time. We'll say that the time for the brick wall to stop the egg, we'll say that was 0 0.01 seconds, and the time for the sheet to stop the egg, we'll say 0 0.5 seconds. And so therefore, we know from before that equation, delta P, equals F net delta T. So we can divide both sides by delta T. So the, let's see, make a little space there. 
F net equals delta P over delta T. All right, so for this sheet, we have 1.56. I'm sorry, this is for the, um, the brick wall. I'm going to do the brick wall first. That's 1.56 kilogram meters per second divided by 0 0.01. And so it's going to be the same as multiplying by 100. And so that's 156 newtons. If we do the same thing for the, the sheet, and if you had actually seen the sheet, or if you go back and watch that video, there's a link to it on the prior slide. You would see the, the egg hits the, the egg hits the sheet, and the sheet moves, and then the egg falls. So it's, it happens over a much longer period of time, and a half second is a reasonable estimation of that. So 1.56 divided by 0.5, we get 3.12. And so you can see there's a much, there's a huge difference in the force, okay? There's the, the wall exerts, according to our calculations, 50 times more force. However, the question here is, does the wall or sheet apply the larger impulse to the egg? And the answer is neither. They both provide the same amount. All right. Good. So this is just a reminder that um, that equation that we were just using, change in momentum is equal to force times delta T. And we can, we can say that delta P, of course, and we just, I'll just rewrite it, F net delta T equals P final minus P initial. And then if we add the initial momentum to both sides, then that gets us to that equation down there. And this is something that you see over and over. It's an accounting thing. If you think about your, your bank account balance, your uh, April 1st, April 1st balance in your bank account, balance, there we go, plus the change for the month equals your May 1st balance. Okay. The amount of sparkling water, cans of sparkling water in your fridge uh, today, plus the amount that it changes in the next week, that's equal to the amount of cans of sparkling water in your fridge next Monday. It's just, it, it's just a fact that however much you have at a certain time, plus the change is equal to how much you have at a later time. And we've seen this in lots of different, um, scenarios uh, throughout our lives, but in um, physics, we've seen this, and I'm messing this up here. Let me start over. V naught X plus A X T equals V X. You may remember this kinematics equation from chapter two. Usually we would write it with V X on the left-hand side. The, the left and right side switch there, but this is simply saying the beginning velocity plus the change is equal to the final velocity. And that's what this says here. The beginning momentum plus the change equals the final. We also had in last chapter, chapter seven, the initial energy plus the change work by non-conservative forces equals the final energy. Okay, so if we do it just for the universe as a whole, we don't need to worry about the work term but for a system, energy can go into or out of a system. So the beginning energy plus the change equals the final. So this is a pattern you see over and over again. All right, so any two objects that interact, if the net force on the system of objects is zero, okay, so if you have a net force of zero, that means this term goes away. And so then you have initial momentum 
equals final momentum. And so this is going to be the case for a lot of examples that we do, not all of them, okay? But there are gonna be lots of examples that we do. So you have to know the difference. You have to think about, is it reasonable for us to say the net force on that system is zero? But if it is, then we can say, okay, well, if there's two objects, we need to account for the initial momentum of the first object, the initial momentum of the second object, add them together to get our initial momentum. And we can do that more specifically with these two terms here. And then the same thing for the final momentum. And so this is a nice equation. You see this equation on your equation sheet. And we're gonna use that quite frequently, but it has to be true that the net force on that system is zero or close enough to zero um, that we can make that as a reasonable assumption.